Hey everyone, Yes Shift on the road again. Uh, I'm Steven Schinder. I'm Dan Schinder. And this time, uh, we just listened slash re-listened, in my case, to another solo album, the, you know, continuing our series of first solo albums by Yes members since joining Yes. And this one, I think it's been almost like two months since the last one we did, so yeah. this one is Can't Look Away by Trevor Rabin, released in 1989. Um, so just briefly, uh, I, should I go over like the context of like a few other releases from that year? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I, I will, but <laughs> sorry, we're on the road, folks, so it's, this is different. Um, I looked these up earlier, so Dream Feeder's debut album came oh, out wow. a few months before this. Uh, Can't Look Away came out in July of 1989, um, if I remember correctly. And there was also um, Nirvana's debut album was somewhere around there, and Nine Inch Nails' his debut album. I can't remember which one came before and which one came after, but you know, it was in that period where the genres were shifting, we were getting more grunge and stuff like that. Um, later in the year, Rush's Presto album would come out, and Can't Look Away came out just a month after ABWH released their album. So, so this is in between Big Generator and Union. Yeah. And yeah, and we'll, we'll get into how working with the S might have influenced this later on, but I'll just read the track list for Can't Look Away real quick. So we have I Can't Look Away, Something to Hold On To, Sorrow, and in parentheses it says Your Heart, Cover Up, Promises, Ed Twile Noir, Eyes of Love, I Didn't Think It Would Last, Hold On To Me, Sludge, I Miss You Now, and The Cape. So, uh, and the song rank credits are interesting. They're, Trevor Rabin is credited on all of them, but on I Can't Talk Away, we also have Bob Ezrin and Anthony Moore. Um, Anthony Moore, of course, known for Slap Happy and Bob Ezrin. He has worked with a bunch of people, including the likes of Pink Floyd. You know, Momentary Lapse of Reason was just a couple years before this. Um, and Moore is also credited for Cover Up, and Ezra in On Eyes of Love, and I Didn't Think It Would Last. Um, Patrick Van Blurk is co-credited on Hold On To Me. And uh, Trevor's father, Godfrey, is also co-writer on Cover Up. Really? Yeah, so I think I got everyone all the credits there, and if not, you can like look it up. But, um, so, what was your favorite track on this? Um... Working backwards towards the last one I heard that really got me, and we were kind of laughing about it, was Sludge, because it's a short <laughs> instrumental. And I heard like hoedown Western music on acid, and then it switched to, right then it switched to like some jazzy stuff that you pointed out. Then it went into something else, and you said carnival music. And yeah. I just <laughs> laughed because I could totally see that. I loved that. It was, and it ended. And the first thing I said was, "That was whack." Yeah. But it was great. I loved that. Um, so there's that, and then I loved what's the one? Eyes of Eyes of Love. Eyes of Loved. I, I, Eyes of Love. I loved. <laughs> and promises. I loved. And the title track. I can't look away. Um, how about you? Yeah, there are a lot of bangers on this album. Definitely. Yeah. I, and I just want to say, well, go ahead and then we'll talk about the Oh, well, yeah, I think my favorite is definitely the title track. It's very triumphant. Um, I remember, I, I think in the late 2000s, I might have listened to bits of this. I definitely saw part of the Something to Hold On To music video in the Yes Years documentary and then watched the full thing later. And I know for sure I sort of revisited this material about five, more than five and a half years ago. And I was just like really into it then. It, like this album was like something I really needed at a time where I was feeling really down in school. And uh, it was just like that title track, it just feels so triumphant. And I remember- You just called me. <laughs> I, I memorized the uh, lyrics to it, and I love singing along to it when I listen to it. And 
and that track, by the way, falls totally into the BAO category, just saying. What? You know, big ass opener? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great opener. It's just yeah. big, fat, wide, majestic, grandiose. It's yeah, awesome. and, and it's also, uh, like he talks about um, apartheid in South Africa, you know, that was going on. So very topical. And yeah, and this was, uh, so I've listened to this album a bunch of times, so it's kind of different from my experiences with other solo albums we've talked about. You know, I think for me, Can't Look Away, I've listened to around as many times as maybe A Lies of Sun Hilo and Fish Out Water. And this is my first time of hearing it all the way through. I remember hearing the title track and maybe one or two other songs way back when it came out. That's it. So for me, it was like, listening to a new yeah. album yeah i might have sent you the title track again a few years ago but yeah like this was very fresh for you yeah um so had you heard about oh i guess you just answered it like you were aware of it when it came out but yeah just didn't. and i remember you know mtv was actually still playing fucking music videos <laughs> back then. so i remember the title track um video and it was great and it oh you, you mean something to hold on to yeah yeah sorry i love that song too um, but him playing the drums on there and the different instruments. So I do remember it coming out when it came out. And if we could talk about the production for a moment, as you know, I always dive into the production. It's kind of the first thing I listen to, I guess, on an album or analyze or let so in it. This album could come out today and it would sound relevant like a brand new album, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of similarities. You can tell Trevor's influence on Yes with the Talk album and the Yes West songs that are on Union, uh, Lift Me Up, Miracle of Life in particular. And then um, what was the other one I pointed out? Uh, Do -do 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 -do. Oh yeah, I think Where you were will you saying be? that. Where will you be? Yeah, yeah I think you were saying, um, I think it was like the beginning of Sorrow might have sounded a bit like Where Will You Be? There's one song that has almost the exact same lit guitar solo as Lift Me Up for a section. And then the, re the reflections... And I think Promises uh, began kind of like City of Love, I think. Yeah, yes. I, yeah. I hope I'm not getting the songs mixed up in terms of like... No, I think what, you're right. I started yeah. singing City of Love, City of Love, and you were like, whoa, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> it just fit right in. But a lot of the, the production sounds, the drum sounds are a lot like what's on union and talk so it's kind of like in the middle how much did doing 90125 and big generator influence his sound on this album or vice versa but he definitely you can hear from this album how much influence he had on talk and the union songs from yes west so so much so yeah. um alan white is on a couple tracks uh, Lou Molino's on four or six tracks. I think like five or six. Yeah, and then another um, gentleman I don't remember. Yeah, I'm looking at the credits real quick. So, yeah, Lou Molino was on tracks one through three and eight and ten. Alan is on tracks four and eleven. Denny Fongheiser is on track seven. Uh, and it also lists the drum machine. I guess it has a nickname Basil for tracks four, five, nine, and uh, the. 11th one as well um, and you have a few people on backing vocals um, oh Bob Ezra and even provide backing vocals how about really? that yeah I don't know if I've ever seen that yeah and uh, several engineering credits but yeah Trevor on this album he not only sang and did guitar but he also did synthesizer keyboard bass and uh, I think he was Hula the hoop, I think yeah, and he, he co-produced this with Bob Ezrin, so... The production's amazing. It's worth hearing just for that. And that's for my taste. I love that big, wide sound, that live sound, rather than a compressed, almost overproduced studio album. I can see how someone could maybe say this sounds overproduced, but not in a squashed down way. But it, to me, it's not laden with the same old processes through the whole thing. And it just sounds big and live and again B A O a big ass opener that just really pulls you in right away and gets your attention I love that yeah what's cool about the opening song is that when he took this album on tour uh, he you know the, the opener has a fade out ending on the album but on the tour he 
played like you know an extended outro so it's kind of longer um you know in 2003 uh would see the release of trevor ray band live in la so it's from that tour in december of that year 1989 and there's like good live representation of this album i want to so, hear it i don't think i've ever heard yeah it's got cover up sorrow uh eyes of love sludge can't oh, look really? away sludge live yeah can't look away and something to hold on to um and for cover up he like we were saying that that feels like it has bits of lift me up but on the live version like that was the show opener and it began with the intro to lift me up and segued into that so he repurposed that for lift me up for what ended up being on union so that's interesting yeah yeah um, it's a great album and like i said it, it it could come out today and sound totally relevant without changing anything yeah, I, I do think lyrically it does feel like you can tell it's from the eighties, but topical it's, because of the lyrics. Yeah, right. Well, there's also like relationship-related stuff, and but it still sounds well, that's like most yes songs. <laughs> right, but it still sounds really good. Um, like on "I Miss You Now," I found it interesting how there'd be a couple lines that sound of lyrics that sound intricate, and then all of a sudden. Uh, the next one is Oceans Part or Contact and like on paper that would sound kind of a boring collection of words there but it works in the song and uh, that song in particular I could imagine it being in a movie like Say Anything which came out that year I could imagine it being like toward the end of that film and just fitting well as part of the soundtrack uh, Say Anything is actually my one of my favorites if not my top favorite romance film. Well, I don't so, think I've seen, no, I haven't seen. Yeah, that. it's the one where uh, John Cusack holds up the boombox. They have "In Your Eyes" by Peter Gabriel. So even if people I've haven't seen, seen it, 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 like that I think iconic that. scene is very, like, it's very iconic. Um, and Frasier's dad is uh, the dad in the movie. So oh really? Yeah. Um, it, it's a great movie. And uh, on that note, there were a few like the instrumental. We got caught, cut off for a moment there because the uh, phone was overheating, but we're back. Uh, so what I was saying was that the instrumental tracks, you know, Etoile Noir, um, The Cape, which I believe is named after Cape Town in South Africa, and Sludge, I suppose, like they all feel cinematic. Like you can imagine them being on film scores, right, Dad? Totally, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of get the sense that I, I kind of wonder, like, how far back Rabin was considering doing film scores and that sort of thing. Um, and also, uh, something I've, I've always found interesting about the song Sorrow is how it's it's a very upbeat-sounding song, even though, like, you know, the title is Sorrow and the lyrics are like, your heart will bring sorrow, it's, but it's like upbeat, it's like, your heart will bring your heart will bring you sorrow like that kind of reminds me of how the more we live let go sounds kind of gloomy but the lyrics are very positive you know yeah um you know on the topic of the cinematic aspect i couldn't help but think of this and so i guess i'll bring it up i think i'd like to hear a collaboration between raven and brisland yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, I think there's some chemistry there. Sometimes when people are a lot alike in a certain way, it doesn't work out, <laughs> you know? Right. But I think that that would be neat to hear what could come out of that relationship musically. Yeah, I, I think you and I also, um, on the drive up to San Francisco, we also... This might have been off air, but we were also saying, you know, Tom Brisson and Billy Sherwood might hit it off yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and I think I've maybe heard little bits of Trevor's earlier solo albums from the late 70s and early 80s, but, like, not in full. But if I remember correctly, I think my impression was they were closer to more straight-ahead rock and roll, whereas Can't Look Away feels more complex by comparison. Yeah, the production much bigger. Yeah, so what would you say, 
How would you say Trevor working with Yes influenced Can't Look Away? I, th you know, that's hard to answer because in his case, unlike some of the other ones, I'm wondering how much of it is the other way around equally. How much he brought in that made that, you know what I mean? Like, right, because that, that how songwriting influenced some of the direction. Of, yes, yeah, so I don't know if it was so much that working with the first two Yes albums influenced this, because he already had a lot of experience doing solo stuff and songwriting and things like that, whereas a lot of the other members who we've covered, other than Rick Wakeman off the top of my head, other than Rick Wakeman, they didn't have solo albums before being in Yes. Typically, their first right. solo album was after having been well, I think, while they were in I think movie. Rick's uh, first official one was after joining Yes. Oh, um, really? Yeah, there, there was a weird one, a weird release that came out before he joined, but it was like without his wanting it release. Like, it was a weird record company thing. I think I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's hard for me to answer that because of what I just said, because I think it could equally be the other way around, how much influence he had coming in to Yes, but I did mention earlier that when you listen to this album, if you're familiar with talk and you're familiar with the un er, Union, <laughs> you can hear, absolutely hear traces of that production work of those two albums, the song, songs that he was involved in. So I think it works that way, but what do you think? Well, I think the experiences of working on 90125 and Big Generator did have somewhat of an influence because, you know, with, with Big with Big Generator, he had to take the reins on the production side after Trevor Horn left the thing, and um, he wasn't, Trevor Rabin wasn't that happy with Big Generator. I mean, we talked about that a few weeks ago, yeah. so... I kind of wonder if maybe with his solo album, he was like, yeah, this is a chance to get things done my way type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure he was probably much happier with Can't Look Away than with Big Generator. Um, and also, you know, before John Anderson joined and Cinema became Yes, there was like a lot of Trevor Rapin singing lead vocals on some demos. And we've heard him sing quite a bit on, you know, stuff like Changes, but this was an opportunity for him to showcase like lead vocals on like almost all of these songs the non-instrumental right. songs and it really shines with that like he's he's a great singer like i yeah. know we everyone knows that but it's, we can't say that enough yeah um, even background vocals and i've mentioned before that if you listen to jason bonham's first album the disregard of timekeeping all those background vocals are trevor raven and they sound amazing yeah I also think um, something to hold on to has a little bit that reminds me of Love Will Find A Way, you know, the do 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 like it sounds very Love Will Find A Way to me. It's interesting, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, should we talk about the music video for that song? Yeah. Like what we remember of it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's such an odd music video. And, and by the way, um, I saw like just a few minutes ago that on this day in 1979, on October 18th, the Buggles video called the Radio Star reached number one on the UK singles charts. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for something to hold on to, it's no exception to the whole making weird music videos type of thing, type of gimmick. Um, you know, it ends with Trevor's elongated arms because of the holding on type of thing and it just looks silly the <laughs> graphics look kind of dated today um and there's like a reptile and some weird Ooh, look yeah. clothing like white with black spots and that's on the drums too i think it's um there are some cool things like i, I think some i think there's a moment where he's like sitting in a chair and it looks like some sort of machine it's really weird like it's and there are lots of guitars which is really cool but yeah, well, that video is very much of that era. Yeah, you know? in those days, they took a lot of, like, the thing to do was to find a director and or an art director, and they took a lot of artistic license and gave people like that a whole new medium to get creative, and the, a 
lot of times, but not always, the artist, the musical artist, will go, I don't know, you know, I just want, <laughs> let me get someone that'll make it look, you know, it was a whole new genre of art and filmmaking, if you will. Yeah, and uh, this is a question we like to ask when it comes to these solo albums. Um, I'm not sure if we should only consider, like, comparing it against Yes West stuff or general catalog as well but yeah so like in either of those um uh prompts like how yes would you say can't look away is very much yes if you look at what came after that with union and talk very it's those two things are so heavily influenced by him not just musically not just lyrically not just vocally but the production I can't say that enough. It's like they, it almost swims together in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think with the Yes West era, this feels like 80% similar to that. I mean, yeah. I, I could imagine, like, if cinema had been a thing without John, I could imagine cinema maybe putting out this album. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, like, just general Yes history, maybe it's lower, like 70, 65 maybe 60 but yeah. but it, it does have like the complexities in places that I love about yes music generally yeah. um, so I would say if people are gonna get this um, listen to the first track first so you can hear my big ass opening factor take yeah. but then <laughs> skip right to sludge just for a slap in the face oh uh, so you see I, I don't I condone like well, skipping to a true. later track on the first listen. Yeah, I actually yeah. hate when people do that. <laughs> I'll just be over here, right? Um, working these controls. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's a great album, worth that, listening though. to. And um, and I remember several years ago, you know, ten years ago, Trevor put out that instrumental solo album, Jacaranda, which surprised us because it had some like jazzy stuff and some really great. Uh, instrumental stuff there is like an operatic sounding song and sometime after that he said he'd be working on another instrumental album as well as another um more like can't look away where he sings on it and hey I'm, show them <laughs> yeah there's like a stack of hay um oh that's not what i wanted to do um yeah but okay i'm not gonna focus on that hang on um, so, I, I'm wondering, like, when are we going to see those albums? I, I mean, he's not busy with ARW anymore, so Trevor, please get on that. We want to hear this stuff. Yeah, for all we know, you're busy making another motion picture soundtrack, but that would be cool. I'd love to get this. Yeah, I mean, his career is, like we've said it before, it'd be cool to read a book about his career, like the trajectory going from rock star and joining Yes, and then... Um, going into film scores and then coming back for all this stuff and um, it'd be cool to see him do like at least one other tour on the road even if it's on small venues like uh, yeah I, I love seeing him play so yeah um, but yeah I think that's uh, I don't know do you have anything else to add? No, I agree with all of them I would think that would be great to see I'd love to get that other material and I would love to read about his story, especially that transition yeah. from rock star to uh, cinematic film music producer, creator, which others have done as well. We're going over some weird asphalts, making a lot of noise, <laughs> but there's others that have done that too. Um, David Byrne, Peter Gabriel, um, a handful of others, so that would be cool. Rick Wakeman, Keith Emerson. Yeah. All right, yeah, so, and if any of you have thoughts on Can't Look Away, feel free to comment or email us at yesshiftpodcast at gmail.com, and uh, maybe we'll find a place to read some of your comments, maybe on a future news episode or something else where it'll feel appropriate. So It must sound we'll like we're see. on an airplane with the window <laughs> down right now. Sorry about that. Right, so I guess we'll leave it at that, and yeah, stay tuned for more Yes Shift down the road. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Or, I don't know if literally down the road, but at some point <laughs> in the near future, I guess. Um, yeah, just uh, keep checking our Facebook page, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>